Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are talking about the Rust-powered game engine Bevy, because Bevy 0.12 was just released. Let's jump straight in with an example. By the way, to run a uh, Bevy app, as long as you have the Rust toolchain installed, it's just do this command. So this is the example to run the deferred rendering example. This will go down, compile all of the code, etc., and get you up and running with Bevy. Here what you see is the new example. Now this example isn't actually very exciting, because what I can do here is I'm switching between a deferred deferred renderer and a forward renderer. So there we're now forward render and we've got forward rendering with a pre-pass. You're not going to notice much difference between these as I switch through them. Uh, so this example isn't really that graphically beautiful, but it does illustrate one of the major new features here is we now have support for deferred rendering. Now the way it works is there's two common mechanisms of rendering, uh, forward and deferred. Forward, as the name suggests, does everything up front. Deferred can actually do things over multiple different passes. There are advantages to each. Uh, we'll get back to that when we get into the release notes, but they now have support for deferred rendering, as well as a hybrid approach where you can use a bit of both. So that is one of the major new examples here. Another one is this guy right here. Uh, we have changes to way shadowing works. So here we can see an example. There is the shadow being drawn in the world. Now, uh, that probably isn't the prettiest shadow you've ever seen. The problem with shadows in general is if your shadow map texture is a little too low resolution, you get these jaggies around the outside edge. Well, we do have options now. So you can see... Uh, now we're using uh, Constano 13 and you're going to get, again, a bit of a, a nicer blurring around the outside. And now you also have this new Jamerez 14, which is performant, but as you're going to notice, you're also getting these... Um, the jittering around the outside edge. That's going to be solved by temporal anti-aliasing, but we have these new uh, filtering mechanisms for shadows, which gives you the ability to create like softer shadows without having to use gigantic shadow maps. We'll get back to the details of that in just a second as well. And then finally, we have light transmission in place. So materials in uh, the Bevy game engine now have a bunch more options when it comes to how they interact with light. This is going to make things like water, um, foil, uh, glass, etc. easier to model. Uh, let me actually maximize this up so you can see the effect. So you've got a ton more control over how lighting will work. Let's just switch up the specular, specular transmission on this one to full. So there you can see the effect as I go through. We can also change the thickness as we go through. Uh, I can change the uh, XOR or EOR, sorry. So you've got a ton of control over how light interacts with materials now. Uh, so this is a pretty cool new feature. It's going to give you the ability to do a lot of things that you couldn't before and make some pretty profound new materials. There's also some new stuff in place about how you can create materials from existing materials and so on. So for that, let's jump on over to the release notes or the, the website first. So here we are. If you want to learn more about Bevy itself, just go on over to bevyengine.org. If you've never heard of this one before, it is a data-driven game engine. uses ECS for the way things are structured. That means that your data is broken up into... Um, basically components. You have systems that operate on that data and they're put together via entities. It's a way of structuring uh, your data and application uh, in generally a, a very multi-processor friendly approach to things. Uh, you've got a 2D renderer in here, a 3D renderer, a render graph, the customization available. It is cross-platform and this one is big. It now actually works on Android. We'll get back to that in just a second. Uh, Bev a UI layer for doing uh, the UI level. There's also new material support. So you can do shaders in the UI layer. Uh, the scene system got a complete rewrite in this version sound system hot reloading fast compile times it is free and open source and there is a book available if you want to check it out as i mentioned this is an open source game engine so it's available under github it's showing me as both apache and mit license which both they're almost identical licenses i think this one is mit but it's possible it's Apache. I'm not sure why it found both or which one it's actually under. Shouldn't be a huge difference either way, but it just basically, no, it is under an open source license that is very permissive. So you can do quite a bit with this guy without, you know, concerns, but you don't have to open your code up or anything like that. And now on to Bevy 0.12. Now there is a ton in this release and I'm not going to go into a super amount of detail. Don't worry. I am going to cover one shot ECS there. So I don't just cover on the graphics stuff, uh, but let's see what all we got here. So basically the top new feature 
feature is the deferred renderer. We have a new asset pipeline. We have shadow filtering, the new uh, transmission for lighting in standard material. You can extend materials. We have the rusty style shader import, suspend and resume on Android. Uh, one shots in uh, ECS, you can use uh, shaders inside of the UI layer, rendering optimizations and drawing and batching, uh, mostly for 2D there. So a bit of a quick overview. I'm not gonna go through all of the release notes here, but I'm gonna get you the TLDR stuff a little bit more than this TLDR. So we do now have uh, the option of doing uh, deferred rendering. So forward rendering was the default before, or forward rendering, clustered forward rendering, I guess, technically, where they did some pre-passes before. Uh, so the pros of forward rendering, it's easier to work with, supports MSAA, handles transparency nicely, nicely, and generally it performs very fast because you're doing everything in one pass. Downside is you do normally have a limited number of lights you can support in the scene, and supporting lighting is more expensive. So if you move to a deferred rendering, you can have generally an infinite number of lights, for example, uh, but the cost to go to deferred rendering is some things are not uh, not possible, and that you sorry, you can do some things that are not possible in deferred rendering. Um, and, but the cons are it's more complicated. Uh, you have to do multiple passes there, uses more texture bandwidth, doesn't support MSAA. Transparency is harder, less straightforward. So there are cons and pros to using forward and deferred. There's a reason why most game engines actually offer both. Um, so it was traditionally forward plus, now it is moving to a hybrid approach where you can actually use uh, both. You can mix and match if you wish. Uh, so they have optional support for deferred rendering. Uh, each material can choose whether it will go through the forward or deferred. And this can be figured uh, per material instance. So basically it's a hybrid renderer. You can have some things go forward, some things go deferred, etc. cetera. Um, so you can see a bit of a breakdown of what the various different passes are in the rendering process. You can read a heck of a lot more about the whole thing here. But the key thing is you now have the option of doing uh, forward in, in a sorry deferred now in addition to forward rendering which is nice uh here we're talking about uh shadow filtering we saw this in action short a while ago one of the challenges here is generally you know you use a very large shadow map to make things work so this one was a 512 by 512 and you're getting jaggies here you can see 4k no jaggies looks very good problem is it's a 4k texture using up 4k worth of memory etc not ideal especially if you're working on like an older phone or whatever thing here um so what they've added was PCF or percentage closer filtering, uh, which is basically a way of blurring. Uh, so essentially it is a blur process. So you can see that on, and then let's turn it off. So it's like a, a blur that is being added to the shadow there. On top of that, they also added this new um, Jimenez 14 method there. Uh, so I guess this is used in Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. Now the problem that we saw with this one running, so it's faster, uh, but the problem is it does flicker. So you gotta combine it with something like temporal anti-aliasing to make it work right. Uh, again, we saw the new options for light transmission on standard materials. So you've got a number of light transmission related properties, including specular diffuse uh, transmission, uh, thickness, EOR, uh, attunation um, color and attunation distance. So you can see kind of what you can pull off with all of these various different features. Gonna give you a, a lot of uh, possibilities for creating uh, certain kind of materials that you couldn't before. Also had some improvements to GLTF extensions for supporting this. So if you're you know creating stuff in Blender or whatever, uh, you can actually specify these particular properties in your export and Bevy will be aware of them. Um, they also had a complete rewrite of the asset system. I'm not going to go into the, the full details of what is here. It, it's got it covered really well in the release notes. But basically, they've ad now added a complete rewrite of their asset system, and it now has a preprocessor available and also has compression available as part of that process. It is opt-out, so you don't need to use it. Your existing solution should not have a problem using it. Uh, but if you need to avoid it, you can actually opt out of it as well. You also have new support for meta files, new support for uh, compression inside of it as well. So your asset that uh, handling is more capable than it was before uh, and is going to be built upon in future releases as well uh, in terms of functionality. But forward-facing changes, it shouldn't really impact anyone. As you can see by my scrolling, there is a lot to the Asset V2 system, but I'm not going to go into you know full details of it. So this is another big one here. So before, uh, it used to crash on suspend on Android. Not ideal. Now it doesn't crash on suspend. So basically, Bevy now supports Android. So that is the last big showstopper for Android apps. So if you want to develop an Android app using Bevy, uh, one of the biggest problems there is now gone, which is nice. Uh, material extensions is a cool new feature. Basically, you can um, extend existing uh, materials. So here you can see using the standard material, they're creating this new one using the extensive system. And here you just basically create a new extended material 
inheriting from the existing one. We're going to make it easier to create materials going forward by extending upon base ones. Uh, we do have automatic batching and instancing of draw commands. This is mostly used in 2D. Instead of drawing a whole lot of meshes, you basically draw using shaders a bunch of textures to a single mesh, which is then like a, basically a batch, and then that is passed through. So it has a whole lot less draw calls, should be a whole lot faster to run. Um, so they're seeing a 200% increase in frame rate, so three times faster uh, on the whole for the number of, of, of things that they can render. Um, batching also works on 3D uh, as well, and you got a 100% increase at that time. Uh, but not everything can be batched. The biggest thing you're going to find is sprite. Sprite batching is a very common optimization trick, and they now support it. You can also opt out of it if you wish. So if it's causing problems or you don't want it for whatever reason, you can opt out. Uh, they've made a bunch of changes under, like, again, to the plumbing to support uh, GPU-driven rendering uh, alongside a compute rendering going forward. Uh, again, I'm not going to get into the weeds or the details of this implementation. This is going to be built on for future versions. And honestly, and I'm not you know, dismissing the person's work here, but this is a plumbing level thing. So end users mostly won't interact with this, uh, but it's going to have like, you know, an effect going forward. You're going to have um, you know, faster rendering, better, more stable rendering, etc. going forward. Uh, so it is a nice improvement. It's just uh, not something user facing for the most part. Uh, Rusty shader style import, so the old way, the new way here. So it's, it's like importing from Rust but for shaders. Uh, GLTF emission strength support here. So in the uh, GLTF importing, you can now have a mission. You can see the various different results of that there. Other improvements to GLTF as well. They improve their uh, wireframe support. Um, yeah, and it, it just kind of keeps going and going and going. This one is one of the biggies here, though. And again, see, I don't just cover the new graphical stuff. I cover the other things as well. But you see here, this is one-shot systems. It's actually pretty cool uh, because one of the downsides to the, the ECS approach, the S in ECS is system. So you think of this as the stuff that does stuff to really minimize it as much as possible. And generally, a system is called every frame. So you'd have like, a, you know, person mover a system that would basically move a character on screen that system would just basically run every frame through well sometimes you just want to do something once or occasionally or whatever well that is where one shots come in basically they don't instead of being run every frame you basically just call them on demand and run that system so this is going to make uh those weird edge cases that didn't fit well as a system before that ran you know frame by frame uh, a lot easier design you now you can literally just do these one shots and done so um, nice approach there, more details of it available here. Um, and then a variety of other changes in here as well. I'm just gonna kind of keep scrolling. Uh, this one's kind of neat. Uh, again, you can now use the material system in uh, the Bevy UI layer with the UI material. So if you wanna have shaders in your uh, UI layer, you can do that now there. Um, UI node outlines. Uh, changes the way that uh, unified time works. So this is just little quality of life things to fixed update. Time now returns contextually correct values for systems running in fixed update. A uh, fixed update can no longer snowball into a death spiral uh, where it freezes because fixed update steps are enqueued faster than it can run. Time management is actually very important in games and game loops. So uh, nice improvements there. Uh, and yeah, we just kind of keep going. I'm not dismissing this work. I'm just kind of at the point where we covered most of the really big stuff. But as you can see from this, there is a bunch more here uh, to check out that obviously I will have links to the release notes available down below. But yeah, there's a lot in this release. And then you can see here's what they're looking at in Bevy 013 uh, coming in the future. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is Bevy 0.12. Uh, yeah, a lot there. Uh, new uh, deferred rendering. We've got the new ECS one-shot systems. We've got the new light transmission model, new shadow mapping options, completely rewritten asset importing pipeline, and so on and so forth. This is a framework with a hell of a lot of momentum behind it. And let me know what you think of Bevy 0.12. Comments down below. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.